Welcome to today's lesson on volume and density. Today, I am going to pose the question for you to define the following in your own words, mass, volume, and density. Volume is the amount of space that an object or a substance takes up. We measure that in milliliters or cubic centimeters. Typically, we're going to use milliliters to measure the volume of liquids and gases, and cubic centimeters is going to be used for three-dimensional solid objects. Um, okay, there's three ways to calculate volume. The first you may remember from math class, it's length times width times height. So if you had a regular-shaped object, you would measure the length, you'd measure the width going back, and then the height going up. Multiply those three values, you'd get the volume of your object. If you had a cylinder or a pyramid or a sphere, those have different formulas, but they do have formulas because they're considered regular shapes or regular objects. They have a ratio to their dimensions. Um, I'm going to teach you today the second and the third, which is the density formula and then doing a calculation or volume displacement. We're going to start with volume displacement because that's something that you would do in a lab setting. In a volume displacement, you are going to have some volume of water and you're going to put in a graduated cylinder, take its volume measurement. Then you are going to add in a regular shaped object, so something funky and that doesn't have its own density, I'm sorry, its own volume formula, um, you're going to add that weird shaped object to the graduated cylinder and it's going to take up space. In doing that, it pushes the water level up. If you have ever filled a drink really close to the top and then added ice, you have experienced overflow, I'm sure, because the ice takes up space and it pushes the water out of the glass. Um, so we're kind of doing that, except we don't want to overfill it. Uh, so when the rock goes in, it's going to take up some space. That's volume displacement. We take the before and the after. Um, this rock is just attached to a string or a wire to kind of be able to pull it out of the graduated cylinder when we are finished. So you should have written down the before volume of 50 milliliters and subtract that from the final volume of 70 milliliters after the rock is added. Subtract those two numbers and you get 20 milliliters, but because this is a solid object, I recommend using the cubic centimeters instead, um, because again, we're indicating that this is a solid. One milliliter takes up the exact same amount of space as one cubic centimeter, so those technically are interchangeable, but it's better to use the cubic centimeters to indicate that you're measuring a solid. Now, density is the amount of stuff that you have in a certain amount of space or how much mass you have per volume. It typically is going to indicate how tightly packed together your particles are. So if you can think of the difference between um, like a carton of ice cream and cotton candy. Cotton candy is a very low density because it's very light for the amount of space that it takes up. Meanwhile, ice cream is way heavier for the amount of space that it takes up. Um, think of a ping pong ball versus a golf ball. They have roughly the same volume, but because the ping pong ball has a much smaller mass, it has a lower density. Uh, the units for density are grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Density did not get a new name for its unit. It's just the mass unit divided by the volume unit. So depending on what you measure, it kind of depends on your density's units. If you have any two of these values, you can determine the third. So if you have the density and the volume, you can figure out the mass. If you have the density and the mass, you can determine the volume. And if you have mass and volume, you can determine density. Density is an intrinsic physical property, which means that any material is going to have the same density um, no matter the sample. So if I had one gram of gold or one pound of gold, those two samples of gold should have the same density. Um, that's what it means to be an intrinsic physical property, is that um, it depends on the material type, not the size of the sample. So an extrinsic physical property would be the opposite. Uh, mass would be an extrinsic physical property. The mass of one is one gram, the mass of the other is one pound, and kind of, <laughs> and, um, that's going to change sample to sample. An intrinsic physical property does not change sample to sample. And density is an example of that. Um, the mass divided by volume for any 
pure substance is going to be the same across the board. So here's an example of a real life situation where you would have to use the density formula. A lot of the time in chemistry, our experiments call for us to use some number of grams of a substance. Um, it has to do with stoichiometry, which is a scary term for math about chemical reactions. And I'll teach you more of that later. Um, but it's true for liquids. A lot of the time we will have to measure some gram amount of a liquid which means you have to take the liquid and put it on a balance, which means you have to dirty up a glassware. And we don't really want to do that um, if we don't have to. Plus, it's kind of hard to get a mass of a, uh, a liquid. It's much easier to do the volume. So we're going to do a calculation to save us from all of that crazy lab work. So this says an experiment requires 43.7 grams of isopropyl alcohol. That's rubbing alcohol. Instead of using a balance, the chemist uses a graduated cylinder. Determine the volume required. The density of isopropyl alcohol is 0 0.785 grams per milliliter. Um, this information is something that might be on the bottle, not your bathroom or kitchen bottle of isopropyl alcohol. Um, this is going to be on like the chemistry chemical possibly. If not, it is on the SDS, the safety data sheet, or you could just look it up. This is a really common um, chemical. You could put this, uh, you could look it up probably in the Merck index, which is like a big chemistry dictionary, or you could look it up on a Wikipedia page or lots of reference pages in books. So this is a pretty firm number. Um, so we can use the density formula because we have the density and we have a mass to find volume. So I like to write my equation just so that I remind myself what everything is, especially because a lot of the time when I do this for real, I don't like to write the units. I feel like it just makes things more cluttered. So I'll just write the formula here. And then when I plug in my numbers, it helps me to remember what goes where. Um, so for density, we're going to plug in that's 0.785 grams per milliliter. Mass is 43.7 grams and the volume is what we're looking for. In order to solve this, you would put a 1 underneath this 0.785 and cross multiply. When you have two fractions equal to each other and one unknown, you can cross multiply to solve for that unknown. So when you cross multiply, um, you would wind up with 43.7 equals 0 0.0785V. Divide both sides by 0.785 to get the V by itself, which would leave you with 55.67 milliliters. Super easy to measure that. You just drop it into a graduated cylinder and then you could add that to your chemical reaction. Pause and solve this practice problem. It asks, what is the density of a 40 gram object whose volume is 20 cubic centimeters? Again, I like to write the equation just to help keep everything straight. I'm going to plug in 40 grams for the mass and 20 cubic centimeters for the volume. Make sure to divide those two numbers. And I am going to account for significant figures. I am left with two grams per cubic centimeter. And that is my density. Because my volume is given in cubic centimeters, I'm going to report my density in grams per cubic centimeters as well. All right, and here is an example of solving for mass. What is the mass of a 239 milliliter sample of peroxide whose density is 1.2 grams per milliliter? Again, we write the equation D equals M over V. My density, see what I'm talking about here? I didn't include units. My density is 1.2 grams per milliliter. I'm going to cross multiply. Uh, 1.2 can go over one because it's a whole number. When we multiply this, we would be left with X on the other side. So it's 1.2 times 239 is equal to 1X or X. When you plug all of that in and solve it, you get 286.8 grams. All right, that's what I have for you in terms of volume and density. Please make sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson, and I'll see you there. Bye.